Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to today's Bible reading. It's April the 29th today. I hope this message finds you and your families doing well. Our readings for today will come from Judges chapter 8 and 9. We'll also read from Luke chapter 23, Psalm chapter 99, and Proverbs chapter 14. Before we open our Bibles, let's pray. Lord God, before we open your word, we ask that you bless your word and this reading to me doing the reading and to those who are following along listening to this reading. And we always pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go into the Old Testament, let's go to Luke's account of the gospel. Today we'll start in Luke chapter 23, verse 44. It says, By this time it was about noon, and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the woman who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Now, there was a good and righteous man named Joseph. He was a member of the Jewish High Council, but he had not agreed with the decision and actions of the other religious leaders. He was from the town of Arimathea in Judea, Judea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then he took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in a long sheet of linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of rock. This was done late on Friday afternoon, the day of preparation as the Sabbath was about to begin. As his body was taken away, the woman from Galilee followed and saw the tomb where his body was placed. Then they went home and prepared spices and ointments to anoint his body. But by the time they were finished, the Sabbath had begun. So they rested as required by the law. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance, so they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there, puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day? Then they remembered that he had said this, so they rushed back from the tomb to tell his eleven disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and several other women who had told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to them, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. Okay, let's go back into the Old Testament now. Beginning in chapter 8 of Judges, verse 18, it says... Then Gideon asked Zeba and Zalbunah, the men you killed at Tabor, what were they like? Like you, they replied. They all had the look of a king's son. They were my brothers, the sons of my own mother, Gideon exclaimed. As surely as the Lord lives, I wouldn't kill you if you hadn't killed them. Turning to Jetha, his oldest son, he said, kill them. But Jetha did not draw his sword, for he was only a boy and was afraid. Then Zeba and Zalbunah said to Gideon, be a man, kill us yourself. So Gideon killed them both and took the royal ornaments from the necks of their camels. Then the Israelites said to Gideon, Be our ruler, you and your son and your grandson, and, uh, and your grandson will be our rulers, for you have re rescued us from Midian. But Gideon replied, I will not rule over you, nor will my son. The Lord will rule over you. However, I do have one request that each of you give me an earring from the plunder you collected from your fallen enemies, the enemies being Ishmaelites, all who wore gold earrings. 
Gladly, they replied. They spread out a cloak, and each one threw in a gold earring he had gathered from the plunder. The weight of the gold earrings was 43 pounds, not including the royal ornaments and pendants, the purple clothing worn by the kings of Midian, or the chains around the necks of their camels. Gideon made a sacred ephod from the gold and put it in Ophrah, his hometown, but soon all the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshipping it, and it became a trap for Gideon and his family. That is the story of how the people of Israel defeated Midian, which never recovered. Throughout the rest of Gideon's lifetime, about forty years, there was peace in the land. Then Gideon, son of Joash, then Gideon, son of Joash, returned home. He had seventy sons born to him, for he had many wives. He also had a concubine in Shechem who gave birth to a son, whom he named Abimelech. Gideon died when he was very old, and he was buried in the grave of his father, Joash, at Ophrah in the land of the clan of Ebezer. As soon as Gideon died, the Israelites prostituted themselves by worshipping the images of Baal, making Baal Berith their god. They forgot the Lord their God who had rescued them from all the enemies surrounding them, nor did they show any loyalty to the family of Jerubbaal, that is Gideon, despite all the good he had done for Israel. One day, Gideon's son Abimelech went to Shechem to visit his uncles, his mother's brothers. He said to them, and to the rest of his mother's family, Ask the leading citizens of Shechem whether they want to be ruled by all seventy of Gideon's sons or by one man. And remember that I am your own flesh and blood. So Abimelech's uncles gave his message to all the citizens of Shechem on his behalf. And after listening to his proposal, the people of Shechem divided, decided in favor of Abimelech because he was their relative. They gave him seventy silver coins from the temple of Baal Berith, which he used to hire some reckless troublemakers who agreed to follow him. He went to his father's home at Ophrah, and there, on one stone, they killed all seventy of his half-brothers, the sons of Gideon. But the youngest brother, Jotham, escaped and hid. Then all the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo called a meeting under the oak beside the pillar at Shechem and made Abimelech the king. When Jotham heard about this, he climbed the top of Mount Gerizim and shouted, Listen to me, citizens of Shechem. Listen to me if you want God to listen to you. Once upon a time, the trees decided to choose a king. First they said to the olive tree, Be our king. But the olive tree refused, saying, Should I quit producing the olive oil that blesses both God and people just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the fig tree, You be our king. But the fig tree also refused, saying, Should I quit producing my sweet fruit just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then they said to the grapevine, You be our king. But the grapevine also refused, saying, Should I quit producing the wine that cheers both God and people just to wave back and forth over the trees? Then all the trees finally turned to the thorn bush and said, Come, you be our king. And the thorn bush replied to the trees, If you truly want to make me your king, come and take shelter in my shade. If not, let fire come out from me and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Jotham continued, Now make sure you have acted honorably and in good faith by making Abimelech your king, and that you have done right by Gideon and all of his descendants. Have you treated him with the honor he deserves for all he accomplished? For he fought for you and risked his life when he rescued you from the Midianites. But today you have revolted against my father and his descendants, killing his seventy sons on one stone. And you have chosen his slave woman's son, Abimelech, to be your king just because he is your relative. If you have acted honorably and in good faith toward Gideon and his descendants today, then may you find joy in Abimelech and may he find joy in you. But if you have not acted in good faith, then may fire come out from Abimelech and devour the leading citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo. And may fire come out from the citizens of Shechem and Beth Milo and devour Abimelech. Then Jotham escaped and lived in Beer because he was afraid of his brother Abimelech. Now let's go to the book of Psalms. We're going to read Psalm chapter 99 today. Tomorrow we will read Psalm chapter 100. So we're making awesome progress. Psalm chapter 99 verse 1 says, The Lord is king, let the nations tremble. 
He sits on his throne between the cherubim. Let the whole earth quake. The Lord sits in majesty in Jerusalem, exalted above all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Your name is holy. Mighty King, lover of justice, you have established fairness. You have acted with justice and righteousness throughout Israel. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow low before his feet, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel Samuel also called on his name. They cried out to the Lord for help, and he answered them. He spoke to Israel from the pillar of cloud, and they followed the laws and decrees he gave them. O Lord our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but you punished them when they went wrong. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain in Jerusalem, for the Lord our God is holy. And Proverbs chapter 14 verses 9 and 10 says, Fools make fun of guilt, but the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can fully share its joy. And with that being read, we've finished today's Bible reading. Tune in tomorrow, April the 29th, as we approach the end of our fourth month of our one-year Bible reading plan. Have a good day if you're listening to this in the morning. Go and share the love of Jesus Christ. Go and share the gospel, even if if it's to one person. And have a peaceful night's sleep if you're listening to this in the evening. Tune in tomorrow, and as we close, we pray. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen.